friends over here at Victory Gas work. Um, essentially, it's a, it's a community uh, basically focused on biomass gasification, some of the newest trends, and you know, if you want to build a gasifier or if you're just wanting to, if the technology interests you, this is the place to be. Some of the history of gasification, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you're a conspiracy theorist, think the world's coming to an end, you're going to need an alternative power source, or you're trying to save the planet, or you're just trying to offset your energy costs like myself, um, this is the place to be. Uh, ben kind of Ben pretty much made sure everyone's welcome. Uh, he actually has an off grader for sale, and it's an all stainless steel unit. Pretty sweet. Uh, I really don't know how he's doing for the price he is. Um, I went to buy, buy a roll of uh, stainless steel welding wire the other day, thirty-five thousand, and um, it was in excess of three hundred dollars. So obviously Ben really believes in what he's doing. In my opinion, he's practically giving the thing away. Uh, a lot of work goes into that. A lot of work went into mine. Uh, but my main focus, I'm not selling anything, I'm just trying to offset my energy costs. Um, anyways, where I spend most of my time over here is in the throw up here in the fast shop. And um, it was started by um, by Eric here, Beamer, and uh, let's go ahead and click on his page. He's a, uh, he, he kind of details pretty much all of his construction process. He's got a lot of photos. What I'm really interested in is the truck he's working on. I'm anxious to see that baby on the road. So uh, Eric, let's get that thing going. I'm anxious to see a video on that. And then, um, Let's, let's go back to the fast shop. Essentially, the fast shop is people who are building gas fires or have aspirations to build a gas fire or planning to start building one. Or if you're interested, just interested. Just come check it out. Um, another person that's kind of inspiring here is, um, is uh, Adam. Click on the end here. Um, he's got pretty much the details of all of all of his experiences in gasification and, and um, his gasifier he's built and, and uh, his uh, how he come across the technology or etc. Et I keep saying technology like it's something new, but it's uh, more than a hundred years old. Um, and then we're going over. Let's go back and we'll go to my page here and. Um, Essentially, I have uh, all kinds of photos of, of my complete build process and just wondering how it works or the hard dimensions or et cetera, et cetera. It's all there. Um, I've got several videos of it running, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, anyway, let's, let's get the ball on the road. Let's pull up the monitor and uh, take a look at my newest video. And thanks for watching. And, um, yeah. All right, guys. Um, this here is my um, my gasifier as it stands right now. Um, I've got a 10 kilowatt generator. I've got a a gearbox, a surplus gearbox I got here. The thing's rated for 40 horsepower at 1500 RPMs. I'm running it at 20 horsepower at 3600 RPMs. It screams. It's almost unbearable. Um, the noise that it makes. This is a 20 horse engine I got on here. My carburetor. Got a uh, butterfly valve here hooked to to um, to the governor on the engine. I've got a uh, this is my fuel air mixture intake here. Let's get around, come on around here. This is what I really wanted to talk about today is uh, my scrubber. I've got a, a 110 volt motor, um, a 350 Chevy water pump, and it's kind of temporary. I wasn't sure how it was going to move enough volume, but obviously it does. And um, water comes in the scrubber here. Gas obviously comes in here. Uh, I've got an adjustable throat here. Essentially, what I do is I adjust the throat back to where I, I where I start to get a loss in performance. So I, I restrict the the flow. I've got a port here so I can see how it's flowing in there. Um, down here, I got another access window. Um, comes on around here. Basically, it's a centrifugally. It separates any water that's left in the gas. Um, I've also got another another um, 
basically like a column of rocks that helps collect the moisture and separate it. Here's my startup fan. Um, come on around. I'm kind of going backwards here. Um, this here is my um, my batteries. I got two 24-volt, um, 42-amp-hour batteries, so I got about one kilo or two kilowatts of battery power here. And uh, actually, that's enough to run my startup, my scrubber, for about eight hours. Um, got a power inverter, my transfer switch that I talked about in my other video. I've got it in a box there. I actually put some primer on it. It's not rusty like everything else. Um, get back here. Obviously, the wood goes in the top. You've seen that in the past. Um, ash door. I got a cyclone filter over here. And uh, come around the cyclone filter. Obviously, the gas goes over and goes in the top of the scrubber. Uh, I've recently added this control panel. I've got an oxygen sensor hooked here so I can monitor the fuel air mixture. And um, Hobbs meter, vacuum gauge, voltmeter for the generator. Um, this is a scrubber switch, a master switch. And I got my my startup fan here. This is my generator. Um, I guess the whole goal of this operation is to have it automatically start up, you know, when the power fails. I'm just using this for a backup generator right now. Um, in the next couple weeks or week or so, I plan to, my, my buddy Phil here, he donated this engine to the cause. So I plan on replacing that 20 horsepower with this, um, it's an R22 Toyota. Um, so in the next couple weeks, that's what I plan on doing there. Next week, hopefully next week I'll have it on there. I'm not essentially just going to turn this generator around, mount the engine sideways here. And then uh, my hopes is that I can power my uh, 30 kilowatt uh, grid connect generator off of it. So we'll see. But that's how she stands right now, and um, I'm really proud of this scrubber. It works great. I, I've, since I've, I've got, um, let me look at the Hobbs meter, I put it on about the same time. I've got about six, seven hours of uh, run time with the scrubber, and I've basically eliminated all other types of filtration. I haven't had to, I've, um, it's eliminated my need for any other type of filtration. Um, some people say, well, you got toxic water, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, you can let that water evaporate, pour it back on your wood. There's any number of ways you can use it. It just, it just makes sense to me. It just works a whole lot better than the, than the, um, the other filter I was using, which I have it sitting over here. It um, just works a whole lot better. Um, I don't have the insulation as I did in the top before. And uh, my cooler, that's my original one. You've probably seen that. But uh, it's a kind of eliminate all maintenance, you know, as far as filtration. I mean, I just got to watch the water level. It actually gains water, um, so I got to bleed it off. I haven't put a drain port in the bottom yet. But um, 